During our Farm Basics time today, we're going to talk about what is an economic threshold for insects, and you know what? Why do farmers even have to spray insecticide? All right, let's first talk about this term, economic threshold. When farmers see bugs out in the field, they're often thinking, well, how many bugs is my threshold where a spray application would be justified? Well, the economic threshold really determines it by dollars and cents. So if there are bugs out in your field causing $10 worth of damage and it costs $5 to spray, clearly we've reached an economic threshold. If we've got $5 or more damage going on in the field, well then it's worth spraying. Now for farmers, most of the time they look at a two to one return on investment. So if it's going to cost them $5, they wanna see a potential gain or yield protection of at least double what they're spending. One of the things that's really changed is there was a lot of university research out 20, 30, 40 years ago saying what the economic thresholds are. Well, since then, crop prices have gone way up and some of the input costs, like the insecticide costs, have gone way down. In the meantime, as well, we've had yields go much higher. So let's say that you're going to lose 5% of yield. Well, it makes a lot of difference if we're talking 5% of 100 bushel corn or 5% of 250 bushel corn. So what I'm getting at here is, yes, there are some old established economic thresholds out there. I'm just saying in a lot of cases, those don't work anymore. You can still use the formulas, but you just have to plug in today's numbers. The other thing that farmers will look at is some bugs can be a vector for disease, meaning they're carrying disease with them. And many times those diseases are not something that farmers want to see out in the field, like bean pod model virus, for example, or barley yellow dwarf. Well, we don't want any of that in our field. So if you see insects that potentially are carrying disease, many times that throws this economic threshold right out of consideration entirely because the farmer says, man, I can't have any of those bugs in my field or now this disease is gonna run rampant through my field. So you can see where we're going here. If it's an insect that just feeds on some leaves and if that insect is gone, well, there's no more damage versus an insect that could carry a disease that could impact the crop the rest of the season. Well, there are some differences there in terms of deciding if a farmer should treat or not. The other thing farmers have to consider is how many insects are out there at or near economic thresholds. For example, let's say that you had grasshoppers, bean leaf beetles, and soybean aphids all at just under economic threshold individually. Well, if you add the three up, now in effect, you could justify treatment. So those are the types of things farmers are looking at. And believe me, as a farmer, I can just tell you, I don't wanna spend any more money than necessary to raise a great crop. I would love to have where my crop is fantastic and I spent no money. That's the ideal scenario. But unfortunately, it just doesn't work that way. The good news here is with a lot of these insecticides, they're much safer than the old things. The most common insecticide we spray on our farm is a pyrethroid. That was developed from the chrysanthemum flower that is relatively safe to humans and animals and everything. Now, I'm not saying not use personal protective equipment, not be safe around it, that type of thing, but I am saying it's much safer than a lot of the insecticides we used to deal with years ago. Farmers have lots of tough decisions when it comes to insect control and also control of our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? 